how to identify the best person for you. Number one, number one, the fear of God. You can't underestimate it. You can't put it in a corner. You can't box it somewhere. Okay? Because a man or a woman that fears God knows that he or she is accountable, not just to you, but to God, who is everywhere, who sees everyone, who knows everything, and who sees even the deepest intent of the heart. And when a man or a woman knows God, has the fear of God, loves God, they have the potential to love you. A man who does not have a relationship with God, a woman who does not have a relationship with God, who does not care about spiritual things, who does not care about the things of God, will not care about you. It's just a matter of time. I'm telling you, I have dated a lot of men. I dated six men before I got married. My husband was the seventh person. And I tell you, I've been with unbelievers, I've been with believers, and I tell you that there is always a difference. So the first thing, the first priority when you want to choose a life partner is what? The fear of God. So the question I will ask you is, do you fear God yourself? Do you fear God? Uh -huh. Because most times we want good things and we don't bother about becoming the good thing. You want the right person? You want the best person? Are you the best person? Are you a right person as well? Because when the right person comes, when the best person comes, there is every potential that you will turn them to become masters because you yourself are not the best or the right person. So it, I always tell singles, work on yourself first. Work on your character. Work on your mentality, your intellectual uh, uh, capacity. Work on it. Work upon, work on your spiritual capacity. Work upon your, I mean, work on your, on your, um, your physical, you know, your physical look. Those are the three areas of life you work on. So, let's go back. The fear of God. The love of God. How do they treat God? How do they treat spiritual things, you know? Do you like going to church? It's one of the criteria. Or you like praying, you like going to mosque. <laughs> <laughs> so if you marry someone who does not take spiritual things serious and you take spiritual things serious, that is being unequally yoked. And you know what that means? Light and darkness cannot work together. One has to bow to the other. Do you get it? So please, when you're trying to choose a partner, the fear of God is the number one. Now the second thing I'll tell you is how to identify the best person for you. They want the best for you. It's not about them. Yeah, do you get it? They put you first. Your career, your finance. They want, the, they want you to become the best version of yourself. And this is not the kind of people that when you are around them, you cannot be your, tech or your own authentic self. Do you get it? You are allowed to be who God has designed you to be. They are not insecure. You know that you see some men, they will say, oh, I, I, uh, there was a time a topic came up and they were like, if your wife earns than you, what would you do? The man said, it's not possible for his wife to earn more than him. <laughs> he will tell his wife to quit that job. Insecure man. You need to watch out for something like that. Will you be the best version of yourself when you're with this person? Will this person allow you to fly? Will this woman understand your career? Will she support your career? Will she support your ministry? If you are a pastor or you have a ministry or a call of God upon your life, these are things. Will this person support my vision? Will this person support my assignment? Will they be ready to sacrifice? Will they be ready to, to help me be the best version of me? Number three, is this person a visionary is this person purpose driven now if you are a purpose driven person don't go and marry someone who is not this person will clip your wings <laughs> i remember a pastor i once joined this church i discovered this man would always cry you know whenever we are praying suddenly we'll burst into tears and he will be crying 
And sometimes I feel embarrassed. I feel irritated. Like, why is this man always crying each time? We, we were praying. And then it started later on when we got to know each other better. He told me that his wife does not support his ministry. And truly, till I left that ministry, I never saw his wife once enter into that church. His wife hated his ministry. The wife never contributed to his ministry. You know, never supported him. Never even visits. You know, it's one thing for the wife to visit once in a while. I never saw her. So you don't want to marry someone who would not support your vision. And that's why I always tell men, men, please discover your purpose before you get married because you are the head and she's the neck. <laughs> if you marry someone that the neck does not fit you as the head, she will be turning right when you're supposed to turn left. The same goes for the female, for the woman. You marry someone you can support his dreams. Please, if you know you don't fit into that man's dreams, don't marry him. If you know you cannot help his vision, because you're a helper, as much as you have a vision, your vision should submit to his vision. Do you get it? And when you do that, he will automatically be someone who supports your own vision as well. But it comes first when it comes to vision, because it's the vision carrier for the family. Mm. Help you get it. Mm. So I hope you understand this. Those three are very important. Don't joke with them. They will save your life. 